Hello, everybody. Um, here back to our webinar series, uh, JFD Power Webinar. Today was a topic trading from the perspective of a broker. But first of all, have a warm, warm welcome and uh, yeah, all the best for the year 2018. So that's already part of my typical announcement uh, for the record. So today is the 4th of January 2018. It's the first uh, webinar this year. And I hope that you have good trades this year, uh, maybe as, be as before, but uh, maybe from now on a little bit more uh, profitable. However, uh, it looks really for you. It's for me a pleasure to have you here um, Yeah, and speak. Uh, my name Stefan Friedrichowski is speaking and just call me Stefan in, um, if you get in touch with me via email. You see my contact here already. Um, it's my email address at jftbrokers, s.friedrichowski. It's a really complicated last name. Sorry for that, uh, at jftbrokers.com. Um, if you have any further questions or um, if you want to have slides, uh, previous webinars, Excel sheets, uh, don't hesitate um, yeah, to get in touch with me directly uh, with that email address. A warm welcome in the name of JFD as well. And um, yeah, you see the title, hmm, Trading from the Perspective of a Broker. That's the reason why I mentioned JFD already here. Um, it has a special reason that I say trading from the perspective of a broker. It's not directly from the perspective of JFD. Um, it's meant different here. What I want to have here within that webinar is that you change your perspective, that you don't think about trades being a trader. That's what you normally do. But maybe for the next 60 minutes, change your perspective and think about you are a broker. And that's my invitation for today, thinking as a broker. And let's look what we do if we are on the other side. So you will often uh, hear wordings like today, I am a broker. And I mean that really in that sense, thinking I am the broker. Honestly, I am not the broker and I'm not the broker JFD. Um, that's not my business. Um, I am responsible for trading strategies. Uh, so I'm not on the execution side. But my invitation is change your perspective. That always uh, might be an eye opener. And let's see what you think after the webinar. As always, um, yeah, you uh, find already the slides from today's webinar um, in the GoToWebinar control panel. You can download those uh, slides if you want. It's a PDF document. Uh, the webinar is recorded as always, and you can find uh, the recordings of uh, the webinars um, on the JFD YouTube um, channel. And that's exactly what you press in Google. If you uh, want to find it, it is simply YouTube, JFD, that's all um, you need to, to look for. And then you, you will find all the recordings of previous webinars. And from tomorrow um, morning onwards, uh, you will find the recordings from today as well. Uh, many thanks for the greetings and Happy New Year sayings here in the um, the chat uh, function of GoToWebinar. Um, uh, thank you very much. And you can use uh, the chat as well for any questions later. If you have those, uh, just uh, write them down there. The other thing, as usual, I have to mention this slide. Uh, as always, that's a risk disclaimer. Um, honestly, today we really don't talk about trading strategies. And <laughs> maybe you uh, will later realize, hey, I talk about trading strategies as well, but now from the perspective of a broker. Um, so uh, totally uh, in line with my invitation today, we are a broker and we think as a broker and uh, you personally should think as a broker as well. But nevertheless, I have to show always a, a slide here. So finally, if it comes to trading um, and um, you always trade on your own. I think that's self explaining and um, that's said. Let's look for another disclaimer. Today I want to mention another disclaimer. It's not really a disclaimer. It's uh, simply a statement of uh, what I do here today um, because I will 
open some opportunities, but everything is theoretically. What I don't want is that anybody uh, should claim, hey, Stefan stated brokers are doing this and that. Uh, no, that's not meant. Uh, it's all, everything here is theoretically, and I have no idea what's in uh, what's really used in reality. I don't know. But let's think what can be done. So what are the topics of today? Um, as mentioned, we, we start with the idea of let's change our perspective and we will do it really stepwise, meaning um, we want to execute trades, but now it's not our trades. We are the broker, we have clients and clients um, have trades. And those trades uh, will be processed to us, and then we let's do uh, let's look what we can do with those trades if they uh, enter our sphere, meaning um, um, our computer, uh, because everything is done here electronically. But before we really start with that idea, let me introduce a few terms uh, within brokerage. Uh, that we know exactly what we are talking about. And you see MM and STP, ECN, DMA. Um, so I simply want to, to introduce shortly those um, terms um, because you will find those terms on websites of any broker as well. Uh, and then you have maybe and hopefully a better idea of uh, what stands behind those uh, terms. And then we start our business. So we, we get a trade and we will execute that trade in my company because now we are a broker. Uh, therefore, I write down here my company because uh, so I'm the head of the company and I'm the broker. After we have done one trade, let's look for a thousand of trades. And later we will think more about our possibilities, uh, what we can do, even that we have uh, a view on um, how to do marketing, but you will see, it depends of, uh, on what kind of broker we are. So a lot of things might happen today within those 60 minutes. Uh, stay tuned, hopefully. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, no problem, just write them down here in uh, the chat. Okay. So I want to start with those terms. And uh, the first here is MM. MM is quite simple, it stands for market maker. Um, that sometimes is already meant a negative, uh, which is not the case. Um, market maker is nothing uh, from, from first principle negative. No, no. Um, that I don't want to, to, to have here within the webinar, but we have possibilities and those are discussed later. Market Maker, they have a so-called dealing desk and to make long story short, what a Market Maker is, is somebody who makes the price. That's all. So um, actually, I don't know exactly, but uh, maybe a Euro, US dollar right now is uh, at one point uh, 20, uh, I'm not sure, um, but looking for trading, it means a market maker makes the price. And if in principle, um, um, the market maker is saying the price is 125, then the price is at 125. You may think, oh, that's curious, uh, well, that's, that's strange. Um, but think about another situation. If you are an, uh, at an airport and you want to exchange money, maybe from Euro in US dollar, you go to a counter, to an exchange counter, and then you uh, place on the table your 100 uh, Euro and you can expect some dollars in return. And how many? Hmm. It will be on the table. And maybe there's written 1.05, maybe there's written 1.10. Whatever there's written, you will get. And if the nice guy behind uh, the counter is changing the price, you, you get a different uh, uh, amount of dollars in return. So in this case, your counterpart uh, behind the counter, yeah, he is making the price. And it's the same what a market maker is, do, is doing. Sounds maybe misleading. Of course, they will follow the, the normal market uh, uh, situation. Uh, it's not a fantasy price, but he's making the price. You need a special license uh, if you are a market maker. 
And uh, maybe a good question always is to your broker, do you have a, a license for being a market maker? And if the answer is no, which is good, at least from, um, from my perspective, and for example, for JFD, JFD does not have a license being a market maker. So definitely <laughs> they are not a market maker. You will f not find market maker that present of, uh, or that obvious on, on web pages. But if you look a little bit around, then you can uh, get a feeling whether you have a broker being a market maker, yes or no. In most cases, you can realize uh, it uh, simply by looking to, to um, the trading conditions. And um, in most cases, don't take it for 100%. In most cases, if you have spreads only, then um, that, uh, the, the probability is high uh, that your counterpart is a market maker. But that's not a guarantee and vice versa as well. So that's a market maker. And you see I have here a dotted line uh, already in between the next three um, terms here, because those terms, STP, DMA, and ECN, sometimes they are really mixed up. Um, for example, JFD is a so-called uh, DMA STP broker. Uh, and you find nearly every combination out of those three. But more or less, what's meant here, and it's not, um, don't take it 100%, but what's always behind is that your order, your order as a trader, when you press a button, uh, the order will uh, receive um, um, the broker. And then that order from, from, from you is processed. It's processed to a pool, to a pool of banks or so-called liquidity providers. And um, I want to mention already here, it's always good if that pool is huge, or um, at least it's not a single bank, or it should be 10 or 20 uh, who are standing behind that pool. So your, your order is really processed to that pool, and I will come to what happens there uh, later. And that means your, your, your broker is more acting as an agent. Um, when it comes to, to order processing. So he's forwarding your order to that pool and execute, finally executed is your trade at that pool, not at the broker. And there are different kind of ways uh, this for this STP. DMA means direct market access. Uh, it's more or less saying that your, your order is directly processed, forwarded, to the pool. And there's one additional possibility, which is called ECN, Electronic Communication Network. And if you have a broker like that, then your clients, other you as a trader, you have direct access to that liquidity pool. Um, normally, um, so most, most brokers, uh, or most of us will not have that opportunity um, because it's, Typically, then you have different trading conditions. Uh, maybe you don't have uh, any more 0.01 uh, lot trading for Forex. The good thing is you can see the order book in, within that liquidity pool. Um, so, but mo in most cases, um, uh, it's not applicable for us as being a private uh, trader. How can you identify brokers like that? In most cases, once again, it's not 100%. Those brokers offer spreads plus commission. Um, first hand, it sounds like, hey, extra costs. Why uh, do I pay commission? Yeah, on the other hand, uh, the spreads are uh, much lower uh, than for the other one. And if you normally add up spreads plus commission, then it levels uh, the spread only conditions um, at a market maker. There are differences. Sometimes the one is cheaper than the other one, uh, sometimes vice versa. But in, generally, in general, you can identify those uh, STP brokers. And from now onwards, I always call those brokers here STP straight through processing, meaning your order is processed in the pool. And normally, as in the case for JFD, you have spreads, low spreads, plus a fixed commission.
per lot or whatever unit. And I will make all the differences up from now onwards only in uh, with um, two definitions, market maker and STP. So that's uh, some terms out of the brokerage uh, scene. And now let's start our business. We are a broker. So therefore we change perspective. So there's a client. <laughs> so it's not any anymore you, uh, because you are now the, the broker itself. And a client trade comes to me. Practically, it means uh, maybe there is a trader sitting in front of an MT4, pressing the button, and uh, what he tries to, to do here uh, is to buy one lot long Euro US dollar. So I'm sitting at my computer in my brokerage home place, and uh, I get that order from that client. Okay. Um, it's just a question here from somebody from uh, out of you. Uh, order book from outside is available to brokers. Depends on market. Yeah, there are special uh, brokers who have uh, that kind of access, and uh, there are um, some, but only very few, who um, give that information direct uh, to clients. Um, so that's uh, just a remark uh, out of the chat. So there's a client now uh, buying one lot uh, euro US dollar. Um, and as always, if you open a long trade, uh, then you open that trade on the ask level. And um, to make my first calculations a little bit more easy, uh, I, I pushed the, the, the exchange rate from euro US dollar uh, nearly to parity uh, because then uh, I don't have to care anymore about uh, dollar and euro. Um, so that's only for simplification here. Um, therefore, my, my price, my current price here is 1.01, uh, so close to parity. So on the ask level, um, that trader is seeing in the chart uh, on the ask level 1.01 and is pressing the button buy one lot long. Okay, and now we have to distinguish what happens between the two kind of brokers, market maker and STP. So, um, and first, what we are doing here in the first consideration is we don't uh, talk about the price itself. It, we don't manipulate. We take all prices as they are, no extras in uh, any direction. So what we have to look here on the market maker perspective. So now we are the market maker. Um, typically, maybe the spread for Euro US dollars one bip, and that means. Um, if the ask is at 1.01, the, the bid would be um, a little bit lower, exactly one bid. And that is, let's say, my price here from um, the market maker perspective. So nothing extra, no changing uh, of prices, no manipulation, nothing. Temporarily, thinking because we are now the market maker, temporarily, when we take the trade, we have already a profit. So PL stands for profit and loss, and temp means really temporarily. That is now 10 euros. That's exactly because of my one BIP uh, uh, spread. Because at the moment the trader is opening the trade at 1.01, if you would instantly say, hey, um, fill that order, um, so so he wanted to exit, uh, to close the trade, then the bid price would be at here, 1.0099. So, uh, and I would earn, I would earn 10 euros. Why I emphasize I, because we are a broker. So at that moment, uh, we have uh, additional 10 euros on our account as being a broker. Let's look from the STP perspective to the trade. Uh, normally, Typical trade conditions um, for an STP would be spread around 0.3 bips, but there will be a commission of 6 euro per lot. Um, in this case, because we have a lower spread, um, the, that ask price uh, would translate to this bid price, uh, and that bid price would finally come out of the pool. How? is next slide. But nevertheless, let's think about our current situation as an STP broker. At the moment we get the trade, uh, we have earned six euros. 
simply because we get the commission. What I uh, assume here, and that's not um, correct uh, 100%, uh, that the, all the commission stays at the broker and all the spread goes to the pool. Um, there are different um, kind of calculations, but um, those kind of details, they are not uh, that important for our uh, considerations for uh, that business model here. So let's assume the spread goes to the pool, we get the commission. That's all. So right now, it stands like STP broker has six euro, uh, euro as being a market maker. We have temporarily 10 euros. Okay, but first, before we now close the trade, let's uh, have a look to what really happens within the pool. So within the pool, it looks like this here. Um, the, the picture is taken from the JFT website in this case, and you see already lots of um, well-known banks here behind, uh, standing behind that pool. In total, it's around 20 or 21 uh, of companies like that one here, Deutsche Bank, City, Barclays, UBS, uh, Goldman Sachs, and so on and so forth. So really big players in the market, and those are aggregated in the um, here in that let's call it a gray box and then now let's think we have that order from our client oh, here's a different price it's not anymore close to parity what will really happen if we we get our order from the client and then we process that order to that uh, pool it's more or less like there's an auction um, around that order so every of those 21 um, the companies here is bidding for my order and they don't know uh, the client name nothing they just get to know oh there's one somebody uh, he want to buy one lot euro us dollar and all those 20 give their offer and what's doing within the pool is simply the best offer gets it so Whoever here makes the best offer for my one lot euro US dollar is getting that order. That's all. And that will be the executed price um, finally going to the uh, client side. So what's good here is we have this, this offering process, this betting process, this auction around client orders. And that makes sure that it's a fair process because um, you may think if there's only one bank here sitting behind that pool, then it's more or less the same situation than with our market maker perspective. But now we have those uh, pool of companies and all um, companies, they, they um, make their offers for those client trades um, and the best one gets it. So that's a nice idea to have uh, uh, that kind of uh, pooling process. Okay, that's the story of behind liquidity pools. And um, so the question for you, now back to being a trader, is how big is a pool standing behind those brokers or um, those bridges? And uh, if that is um, like here 20, that's always a good thing. Uh, because then we have really that, that, that auction process uh, behind. Um, but now let's think the trade will be closed. So our trade, our client is now saying close the trade. Um, that one lot long euro US dollar. And now I simply want to have two cases. Um, the one, the price during between open and close of the trade uh, went north, and uh, that's uh, A, and the price went south, uh, that's B. And uh, so it's in both cases uh, here 0.001, uh, one uh, to the north and one to the south. From the trader's perspective, um, case A is, uh, oh, that should now be, that's from yesterday, uh, German webinar, is a profit and uh, uh, B is a loss from the trader's perspective. 
the prices um, are the prices shown up in the chart. So at that millisecond, uh, the trader, the trader closed the trade, and I took here the prices, let's say, from the market maker, and I translate those prices later to the the pool simply by applying the right uh, values for spreads. Okay. So in case A. From a market maker perspective, so we we are the market maker. We get uh, we are uh, the counter side of the trade. Yeah, when the price went north, um, that means from from my perspective, being the broker, um, I lose 100 euro here. The client um, is winning 100 euros. Case B is quite simple, uh, simply vice versa. So, but but uh, let's stop a second here. So. What we see here is the client's profit is the broker's loss, and the client's loss is the broker's profit. Interesting. That's a, a nice business model. Model, but let's keep it uh, for a millisecond like this. But it's obvious. It's exactly like this here. Nothing else. From the STP broker perspective, uh, if we are uh, such a broker, okay, we handle that order um, that we have slightly different um, bid values here is uh, simply because we, we have other spreads. And finally, if you calculate it up here, it means um, in case A, the client would gain 101 euro and uh, in case B, the loss trade from the client's perspective would be minus 99. That we have a little bit different numbers here is because of spreads. But still, being the broker, um, I don't care <laughs> uh, about the trade of my client. Um, in both cases, I still have my six euros. Um, those I have already at the open of the trade. Good. So looking to that here, um, and we ask ourselves, what kind of broker should we be? Market maker or SDP? Hmm. First thinking, we should go for an STP broker because we definitely always earn those six euros here. And on the other side, it simply depends on the trades of my clients. So if the clients lose money, I earn money and vice versa. So here, up to now, it looks like mm, let's go for an STP. Um, okay, um, just a question here from, from you. Uh, the webinar is recorded, yes, um, it's, uh, um, and you will find it uh, later on, later means tomorrow, uh, on the JFD YouTube channel. So uh, no problem if you want to have some additional uh, information or just uh, for, for, for recaps and um, you can look to the JFD YouTube channel as well. Okay, now up to now it looks like going STP is a better choice because then we definitely earn money uh, and uh, we don't care about the market. But let's draw an intermediate conclusion here. So we know STP always wins. Hmm, nice. For every lot we get our six euro. And, um, and for market maker, hmm, it depends on the client. So profits of the clients are losses of the broker and vice versa. So it depends, we might think, but we will see the story is better for the market maker, but that comes a little later. Now let's turn our business to an egoistic business model. What does it mean if we are an STP? Hmm. Then we should think my clients should trade as lot as possible. So as much as possible. So uh, that's what's good for my business. So if I'm an STP broker, my clients should trade because I, I get my money via the volume. And as a market maker, mm, I have a simple uh, attitude here. Um, for me, as being a market maker, it's good if my clients make bad trades because then, then I uh, earn money. Let's stop here a moment. What does it mean? This means we have a very strange business situation here. Normally, if you talk about business or any 
trading activities, and now I mean with trades, not only what we do here with uh, forex trades or whatever kind of trades, I mean with any business in our overall life, normally we always prefer what we call a win-win situation. Just as an example, um, if I go to the next restaurant and order a pizza, um, then I will get hopefully a pizza and uh, hopefully uh, it's a good pizza and I will pay uh, some euros uh, for the pizza to um, to the waiter. But it's a win-win situation. I get my my uh, my food and um, of course I pay for my food and uh, so the, the owner of the restaurant gets money as well. That's what we call win-win situation. In this case here, being a market maker, it's not a win-win situation because we have that that, that <laughs> asymmetry here. Like, um, yeah, clients' losses are my profits and vice versa. Hey, uh, that's really strange. And normally, honestly, I could even stop the webinar right now here because now everything is set. But let's be a little bit more creative of uh, what's around uh, that kind of uh, things. Um, so let's first, because we see here, hmm, market maker. So it depends on my client trades. Good. Let's have a look to thousand trades. Um, and as always, you know, I have an Excel sheet for that uh, prepared. And um, yeah, what we have here is uh, 1,000 trades being a market maker, so MM, and being an STP, and we have an equity um, from the broker's perspective. So as previously, my commission is six euros. Uh, we always have a trade, um, and now I simply make it easy. Uh, the trade is either plus 100 or minus 100, um, and that's all. And of course, uh, you see the red straight line here. Uh, that is uh, the equity being an STP broker. It's quite simple. It's uh, just uh, always times six. Uh, that's the equity. Um, and for being a market maker, yeah, it depends on how good the trades are from my clients. So if we are at a level of 50-50, um, of course, we get strange equity curves like this one, sometimes to the minus, sometimes to, uh, to the positive, as always. But you remember, we have had more or less a similar kind of charts um, um, when we talk about stock markets and statistics, for example. The good thing is already, if we think about a market being totally random, then your first guess, what could be um, the win weight. Uh, so Treffer quota means win weight. Uh, the win weight of, of my, my clients um, might be 50%. <laughs> no, the answer is it, not, it will not be 50%. We make our considerations then without spreads. The spreads itself already makes a picture asymmetric it's a little bit like playing roulette you don't you, you not only have the black and the red um, part you have the green yellow as well which introduces um, an asymmetry here into the picture and um, that break already doesn't make the, the picture any more fair in this case even in a random market i'm on a winner side because we always earn the spread, you know, when you open a trade as being a trader, you are instantly in the minus. That's the reason. So if you go here down the road uh, with um, with the percentage values, you see, hey, okay, looks good. So if the win rate of my clients is only 45%, you see my equity being the broker. Doesn't look bad. So... Um, so we, I can can always because this here is done random. Um, you see, I get different equity lines, but on average, I get ten euros per trade here. I know it's a simplification here. Um, just having trades only with plus and minus hundred, um, there might be trades with different risk reward ratios, whatever. But it doesn't change the overall picture and the overall numbers. You see. It's not that bad being a market maker as long as my clients 
make in majority losses. Hey, that's a nice equity here after 1,000 trades. Doesn't look that bad. And the story is even better. The story is even better for me being the market maker. I make here a summary of two unproven statements. And uh, honestly, they are really unproven and uh, they are secondhand knowledge, uh, so uh, to speak. Um, the first one, I think I can remember where I got that number. The, I, I think I, I have read a, a report, uh, it was about France. They have made an investigation at brokers uh, and that don't think that there's any difference between France and Germany and other countries here. Um, and that investigation revealed that 80% of all traders are losing money. Hey, that's good news for us being a market maker. And there's another uh, um, secondhand knowledge or just uh, um, what I picked up somewhere. And honestly, and I mean it really uh, honest, um, I cannot remember where. Um, there's a 90-90-90 rule of brokerage. And that, trans that, that rule translates to 90% of all traders lose 90% of their invested capital within 90 days. Wow. That's the reason why I write it down here as well. Um, I hope that you are not part of that story, but let's think about this is true. Perfect story for us being a market maker, because if clients in average lose money, um, I don't have to worry. I get my money. And if you go back to my Excel sheet and uh, I put numbers like like 45% or, or something like that, and that was a really, already a fun, uh, fantastic story. Uh, what if that story goes even worse uh, from the perspective of clients? But that would be perfect for us uh, on the other side. Yeah, but that's how it looks like. So maybe we change our mind. Uh, we should be not anymore an STP broker um, with a constant earning per traded lot, which looks nice as well, but it seems that we would earn much more money if we are a market maker. So let's think about we are a market maker. What can we do else? Um, and now let's get nasty. Let's really be unserious. Let's think what uh, can we do else? And let me first guide you to my last sentence here on my slide. Um, I don't state that somebody is doing it, but at least it's possible. So if we are really that untrustworthy here, then we have a couple of opportunities. We are the market maker we make the price. That means in principle, we are able to systematically worsen entries and exits of trades. And maybe our clients would not even recognize that we are doing that. You know, and now what I'm saying next is, is true for both uh, STP and market maker. If a trader is pressing the button by and he see, he's seeing the price 1.01. We all know that the, when the, when that order comes to our place, the price is not anymore at 1.01. It's always the next price is the price for that order. And prices change. And especially during events, they might even change dramatically. So, if somebody sees within the chart a specific price and then pressing the button that he is not getting exactly that price, it's normal. We all know that. And that happens for STP brokers as well as for market makers. <clears throat> if somebody is doing something there systematically, it's hard to realize that. Uh, have you ever... Um, looked exactly to at what price you press the button and at what price was finally uh, in your book. 
it's really difficult. And even if you have um, limit orders, stop orders, whatever, you know the, the order limit or stop limit is a price when that order is activated. And that means that order is now a market order. So once again, it's not exactly the price of uh, the pending order, which is finally the executed one. So since we are the market itself, so we make the price, we are able to systematically worsen those entries and uh, exits. With a pool, it's difficult to make it systematically because the pool is now driving the price. Um, so thinking really bad, uh, it would mean all the, the, the companies within the pool would um, have to cooperate uh, in order to systematically worsen the price. So it's not um, very probable that this will happen. So in principle, being a market maker, we couldn't do what is here in the first line. We could do something else. We can try to tempt our uh, clients, for example, with uh, Boni programs. So you you know that you you of course have seen offers like um, if uh, you you transfer five thousand euros to an account, you get extra five hundred um, euros. Um, on top uh, from the broker. Um, the only thing is you have to trade a couple of uh, lots um, before you can withdraw any money from that account. This is really like a temptation for a lot of people. Think about from a business perspective. If somebody is offering something like that, finally, it must be transferred to money in for that company. Otherwise, he would not offer something like that. He's not really opening his own, the, the owner of the broker is not opening uh, his wallet and give you extra 500 uh, euros or whatever. No, money finally comes back. So if I know that the majority of traders lose money during trading, um, then I as a broker would not lose with those bony programs. So it might be a good uh, uh, marketing uh, strategy here. And finally, just uh, um, as one third idea here, if we are really nasty, um, then we know the stop losses and take profits, at least if those um, being set by the trader. That's a wonderful idea, looking to thousands of accounts, seeing all the stop losses, and then thinking, I make the price. Maybe I should turn the price one bit lower, higher. There's a huge amount of stop losses. Um, that would be an opportunity, so to say. And you all know the, uh, the answer to that. You call it stop fishing or something like, like that. We all feel uh, already um, that we might have suffered exactly that. It can happen, yes. And if we know all those levels, we might use it. Once again, I don't state that uh, anybody is doing this, but at least we have the opportunity to do it. Okay, stop hunting is somebody uh, stating here. That's uh, maybe an even better term for, for stop fishing, stop hunting. Ah, I like it. Uh, that's a good wording. Good. So that's really if we uh, would get nasty. But let's go back to being serious. We are a market maker and we have a business and we are good businessmen. Um, sorry, good businessmen. And what we have to do, to do is we have to look after our risk because it's not always that easy like it, uh, it looks like uh, from, from first hand. So we have to care about our risk. What do, do I mean here? What if my clients, once again, we are the, bro the broker. We are, in this case, a market maker. What if 
my clients are in majority euro us dollar long and the price goes indeed north what a bad situation the good thing is uh, and you 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 remember um, if price goes north and all the guys are long uh, then it might end up in big losses for me the good thing is first of all we only have to care about our net position there are always a couple of traders long and a couple of traders short that's good because that balances already my risk being the market maker finally i only have to care about my net position so simply the sum of all the long and the short trades uh, in my overall um, brokerage account what i might do here is simply for maybe on an hourly base or whatever time frame you you have in mind here i look to my net position and if i see bad situations then i really process orders to the real market but i would now go to the real future markets because they have um, better offerings less costs uh, um, tight, tighter uh, spreads so if i do that if i bundle my net position and then go with that to the really the real market and that's always the future market um, so i can hedge myself so to say um, and since i get better conditions there uh, then i'm charging my clients so it will not be that worse for me so even in that case if the majority of my clients is right um, it must not automatically be bad for me because i only have to care about my net position the cancels already in most cases uh, everything out but in, in the uh, rare situation that that um, it will not cancel i have at least something i can do and uh, that is just processing something to the real market the other question might be what if if i have some clients who make constantly uh, profits <laughs> that's that's strange isn't it i mean on the other hand that's what we want to have uh, being a trader we want to have constant profits and maybe since we are now the broker we we realize that there are some um, which are yeah really good what to do hmm. even in this case no problem we simply have to identify those good traders and what we do is then we process exactly those orders from those traders to to a pool to the real future market whatever and even uh, more strange maybe we, what we can do here is we might even double those trades and double is uh, just a number here and since we realize hey there are good traders let's double those trades and then we have some extra profits as well there's a challenge honestly and um, that's uh, not easy uh, the challenge is simply to find an algorithm for those for this client classification and it's really called that way client classification um, looking for the good ones and looking for the normal ones and then we know what to do with those um, so there's a challenge but the good thing is you you remember um the percentage values like uh, 80 percent uh, versus 20 percent if we are not um, extremely good so if we our classification algorithm is not perfect it doesn't uh, matter that much because um, we we have some tolerance or we we, we have some buffer for that uh, for if we are not 100 percent sure or right uh, for that client classification so but in principle we can manage our risk um, by processing the net position at least if that is maybe above a certain threshold and the price is really going against us which means the price is going with the clients um, so we know what to do then 
Um, so that means we can manage our risk and that's good. But the question might be, can we offer something extra being a market maker to our clients? And the answer is yes, we can. Um, since we only care about our net position as on my previous slide, it means we can reduce swap costs. So those uh, financing costs for overnight trades, uh, because we, we have two ways to manage that. One, if we have everything in our books and we don't process and give anything out to the real market, then we don't have any swap cost at all uh, because everything is virtual and only in our books. So we, we can um, we can charge some swaps to clients um, and that's simply an, an extra earning and nothing else. And even uh, if we process a little bit of those orders uh, to the real market uh, or we only look to our net position, of course, since we are looking to the net position, um, that's good for us because uh, then we have not that huge costs there. That means we can offer something for clients. Sounds like a good thing. Keep in mind all the other things previously said. So it's sometimes, and I got questions like, yeah, um, market makers are offering better swap conditions. The answer is yes. You know the reason now, uh, if you didn't know it before. But think and look about uh, on your trades. Think about trade execution. Think about what else goes wrong with your trades. And then draw your final conclusion. So don't forget all the other things. I mentioned this one here because that is the one which seems to be obviously better for market maker. And um, therefore, that's the reason uh, to mention this here as well. But finally, we are doing a business. And business means we have to do some marketing um, for, for our company. And uh, the reason why I mentioned it here is because then you can realize what's really going on, uh, going on uh, in the brokerage scene here because you see how people are doing marketing. But both sides, market makers and STP brokers, are doing the right things. But now we can identify which is right for what kind of broker. Being a market maker and looking for marketing it means what we need is lots of clients, maybe lots of new clients because we need new and fresh money. So what we need is we need marketing with a really big reach. So we need um, new people realizing, hey, there's a broker. I haven't heard of that. Uh, what is the business model or what is he offering? And so maybe a sponsoring for um, a football club or something like that would be a good uh, thing for our marketing activities because we need that reach and really big reach to address new clients with fresh money. So that may might be our target. Doing marketing from an STP broker perspective is different. Let's first of all, we, because we are the broker, let's think about our own interest. What we need is simply clients which trade a lot because we earn by volume. So that's what we have in mind. On the other hand, it means we need clients which are successful. Because if my clients are successful, they will trade more and they will trade, trade longer. So that's what we have in mind when we look to our target clients. So what we need here is a really good mouse-to-mouse -mouse propaganda, maybe about our excellence in trading execution, maybe about slippage and uh, positive slippage, negative slippage, uh, better to have positive slippage here. That is what we need being an STP broker. 
Or finally, and that sounds always a little bit uh, strange when I mention that, we, we have to know being an STP broker, in most cases, we are second choice, which normally sounds bad. But I mean this here extremely positive. Second choice here means simply um, people come to STP brokers maybe um, after they have traded uh, at somebody else. And then their second choice is finally a broker which is really transparent and uh, is offering a really fair fair trading execution or trade execution so therefore second choice but this is meant definitely positive so we know how to make marketing we have a business model we are ready to start our own business but that's now on your end uh, what to do next and that's my personal summary here and I change my wording once again here and um, um, on yesterday in the in the German webinar, uh, there was not only in bold letters uh, the I, it was really the complete name here, um, but unfortunately in, in English it's only a single letter, so I cannot uh, um, emphasize uh, or highlight here what I mean really uh, in English. But it's my personal statement. Um, what we have know now, the business model of a broker is really quite interesting. And we know the two perspectives of uh, being a market maker and an STP broker. I personally want to make my business, and that I, it's not only trading, it's uh, any kind of business interaction with anybody, always in a win-win situation and not in a win-loss situation, because then I feel much more confident and much more um, yeah, being, being treated fair if both parties have a real win-win situation, because then we, we do all our, all our best on both sides. And uh, only if we have such a win-win situation, I think uh, that's... Um, that's a fair base for any kind of business. Of course, I have to pay something here if I do business and if I do trades because I, I get a service, my access to, to markets and uh, um, customer support, IT and so on. But I want to get something in return. And um, as always, if I pay for something, I want to get um, an, an extra value out of that or at least something in return. And that means I need somebody who is really just fair and direct. And by the way, that just fair and direct uh, are the three letters of uh, JFD. But anyhow, the conclusion is here quite obvious. Make your own brokerage. Maybe that's the next business model for you. And honestly, um, um, it's not that difficult to become a broker um, of course you need a little bit money maybe mm, something around uh, one or two hundred thousand uh, euros and you can s think about starting such a business but anyhow if you don't make your own brokerage now um, then my advice is quite uh, easy and simple look for a good and valuable partner uh, for your trading activities and um, I think then we can do all our best here. You see, being a broker might be um, a good change of perspective for today. And I hope it has been an eye opener for uh, the one or the other. Um, really thinking about trading from the other side, because normally we sit in front of our charts and we press a button, buy, sell, whatever. But now, we looked a little behind the scene on the other side, what's happening there. And of course, on the other side is somebody who wants to make business. And of course, he wants to get his own profits. No question, that's business. But we want to be treated fair. I think um, that's obvious as well. 
Yeah, that was an unusual webinar. No strategy, no trading strategy. There has been strategies, yes. <laughs> Theoretical tr um, strategies from a broker's perspective, not trading strat strategies for us being a normal trader. That will be a topic in two weeks, um, once again, and all the other ones before, uh, more, they have been more related to uh, the trading strategies. You will see, comes again. And I hope you enjoyed that change of perspective um, for today. So, having a good time. Bye-bye. Ciao.